Are you still experiencing weakness after injury despite hours of rehab and strength exercises? Well, you're not alone. Many experience persistent weakness after injury, especially after injuries that involve the joints. And no matter how much you strengthen the injured area, it can be incredibly hard to get the strength back. This can leave both you and many medical professionals scratching your heads. Well, the good news is, is that there is a reason for the lack of progress. So in this episode of Physio Show, we will be investigating a common cause of persistent muscle weakness that many people are unaware of. Arthrogenic muscle inhibition is a term used to describe a phenomenon where the injury to a joint can result in inability to activate your muscles. This commonly occurs after injuries such as an ankle sprain, ACL tear or reconstruction, arthritis, and total joint replacements just to name a few. This phenomenon is normal after injury, as it is a protective mechanism to limit movement and force that goes through the injured area to prevent further harm. However, arthrogenic muscle inhibition can be a major issue if it does not resolve. So how does this happen? Well, joints have specialized sensors called mechanoreceptors that receive information about your body's movement and transmit it to your spinal cord and brain. But after an injury, inflammation, swelling, and pain interrupt these outgoing signals, impacting the flow of information. This interruption results in a cascade of changes within your nervous system. For one, it significantly affects the reflexive control of our muscles. The ligaments that make up your joints play a crucial role in influencing the function of the surrounding muscles. This is because many of our movements are reflex driven, meaning we don't consciously think about contracting or relaxing our muscles. It just automatically happens. Think of it like a circuit that starts at the joint where the mechanoreceptors send impulses containing information about our movements to the spinal cord, which activate a group of cells called motor neurons. These neurons in turn instruct our muscles how to contract. However, when an injury occurs, there are fewer signals traveling from the injured joint. This results in the activation of fewer motor neurons in our spinal cord, leading to a diminished signal to contract our muscles. Kind of like poor cell phone reception. So our movements lose precision and the strength of our muscles is noticeably diminished. This not only impacts the body at the site of the injury, but also has effects all the way up to our brains. As a result of less signals coming from the injured joint, the brain needs to get information somewhere in order to move properly. So to compensate, the brain adjusts by relying more on other forms of sensory information, such as your sight. It also begins to activate other parts of the brain which are normally responsible for thought, to assist in movement. So in other words, movement that was once reflexive and effortless becomes conscious and effortful due to the increased cognitive demand. And as movement now requires increased cognitive effort, with the brain recruiting parts not typically involved in movement, there is reduced activation in the motor cortex, the brain region that is actually supposed to be handling all the responsibility of movement. This results in fewer signals traveling to the motor neurons in our spinal cord, which further reduce muscle control. This is the reason why many struggle to regain strength despite consistent exercise. The issue lies not in the muscles, but in the neurologic system. It revolves around the joint's capacity to relay information about the environment and the spinal cord and brain's ability to activate motor neurons to initiate muscle contractions. So no matter how much strengthening you do, it can have limited impact on these neurologic changes. While research on specific treatments for orthogenic muscle inhibition is ongoing, several evidence-based approaches have shown promise in addressing and potentially reducing the effects of this phenomenon. Recognizing that swelling and pain significantly impact the sensory processing of joints, effective management of these factors is crucial, particularly in the earlier stages of rehab. And because joint flexibility is essential for proper information processing, manual therapy techniques aimed at restoring joint mobility, including joint mobilization, manipulation, and soft tissue massage, can also be effective strategies. Full range of motion can help reestablish the communication link between the joint and the nervous system, ultimately diminishing inhibitory effects on muscle activity. Additionally, neuromuscular electrical stimulation involving the application of electrical impulses to muscles can also be valuable in enhancing muscular activation. This technique directly stimulates the muscle fibers by increasing the level of electrical stimulation, resulting in elevated motor recruitment. This can help restore and reactivate muscles affected by orthogenic muscular inhibition. Another technique known as biofeedback can offer real-time insights into muscle activity. This can help individuals gain conscious control over inhibited muscles by increasing their awareness and encouraging intentional muscle activation. So remember, it's not all about strengthening. Don't forget about the nervous system. Improving neuromuscular control can be just as important in leading to long-term improvements in strength and function. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Physio Show. You can help support the channel by giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us to continue to educate you about your body, how it works, and what it needs to keep moving.